the topic for today is self-sufficiency, a great force in a lady's life. Self-sufficiency, a great force in a lady's life. Self-sufficiency, a great force in a lady's life. So self-sufficiency is a great, great force in a lady's life. So that's what we're going to be examining today. Self-sufficiency. And I, of course, you know, I've given you a lot of this. I've given you many, many points uh, in this regard. So self-sufficiency as a force, a formidable force in the life of every lady. Every lady that uh, has self-sufficiency, uh, she's going to enjoy her life much better than a woman that doesn't have self-sufficiency. And it doesn't matter if she's married or she's not married. A lady without self-sufficiency is going to become a victim sooner or later of the husband, of the family, of the people. I mean, the world is mean to women and the world is wicked to the lady girl. And, uh, and what the world does is just to take advantage of them. Uh, the world use, uses every means, the slightest opportunity to take a ride and to, you know, on the woman and uh, to take advantage of her, to abuse her, to use her, to oppress her. And uh, yeah, it's bad. So the only way for a girl to counteract that and to protect herself is to become self-sufficient, is to become self-sufficient. And that's why these topics that I've been treating all this week, I think they are priceless. They are priceless to any girl, especially any young girl. And even if you have boys growing up, growing up in your home, I think the boys need to know this as well. The boys must know how to value their sisters. Because when you are growing up as a boy, and a girl in a family, sometimes you think you are just the same. Sometimes boys don't know that there is a big difference between girls and boys, and they don't know how to treat the girls differently. Now they just treat them like any other kid, and and they teach they treat them like they treat each other. So it is uh, it is paramount that you know every parent, every mom teaches their kids who a lady is, who a girl is, and how to treat a girl like a woman, like a girl, like a lady. And also, it is also paramount for every parent that is having a baby girl to train that girl to, be, to prepare herself better for life and to learn to make herself self-sufficient in life before she meets the crude, hard, wicked, cold world out there because uh, the world is mean to the girls so um, so that's what I'm going to be uh, I'm going to start addressing today now the number one point talking about self-sufficiency the very first point I want to I want to address today is the th is the very thing that girls fear most girls are girls are always afraid of mm, loneliness uh, i don't think it's the girls who are afraid really i think the society makes them and their parents and relatives makes them to think that to remain single is bad so i think uh, women Maybe not all of them, but I think there is a stereotype in the society making ladies to think or making women to think uh, that women, that, that no, that making women to think that uh, women should not be alone. And because of their emotional, um, because of their emotional instability, you could say, or the mood swing of the woman, sometimes they themselves begin to think that the only thing that could cure their mood swings and, uh, and, and their, 
you know, that could really keep them happy is to have a man around them. There is no greater lie than that lie in the whole world. The greatest lie that has been told to the woman, to the girl, is that she has to have a man beside her to be happy. I will say the opposite. I will say it the other way. That the truth is that a woman will not be on, I mean, a woman will remain happy until she gets a woman, she, she gets a man around her. The truth is that <laughs> a woman does not become unhappy until a man appears in her life. Uh, every woman is living a fairy tale life until she begins to date, until she begins to have boyfriend and husband and things like that. That, that really is where the tragedy of the woman lies. That really is where all the pains, I mean 90% of the pain in the life of a woman is always connected with a man that they are getting themselves hooked up with. So really, to say that, uh, to say that every, a, a lady needs a man to survive and to say that uh, every woman needs to marry and, and that way she will resolve her problem is the deception of hell. It's, it's a great deception, great lie. So for you ladies to be thinking that you need to get a man or a boyfriend or you need to get into a relationship or get into a marriage relationship because you want to resolve your problems, ooh, you will be broken. Oh, you will be so broken. Oh, oh, you will be so broken. You will be so disillusioned. You will be so beaten hard that <laughs> you will cry your blood out if you are going to a relationship to resolve your problems. If you are going to a relationship to resolve your loneliness. If you are going to a relationship to, to be happy. You are going to be beaten so hard. <laughs> In fact, that is why a lot of ladies end up divorcing. That is why a lot of women end up divorcing because they are not quite prepared for the kind of uh, challenge that marriage gives them. They are not quite prepared to the kind of, for the kind of uh, troubles that they meet in marriage. Actually, no matter how good your marriage is, no matter how good your husband is, even if your husband is Jesus, Jesus you're, you will still run into more problems in marriage than when you are single. If, like I said, even if you are married to Jesus, you will still, your, prob your problems will still increase 10 times minimum. So, Marriage increases a lady's problem, complicates a lady's life at least 10 times. The same thing with a man's life. It complicates your life at least 10 times more than before you were married. You know, so, so, you know, so the only people who are supposed to go into marriage are people who are ready for multi multiplied problems. For people, there, there is, the marriage is only for people who are already set, who are already ready to to tackle more problems, to uh, encounter more challenges, and to be able to resolve their problems. So a marriage is only for men and women who are experts, who have become good in resolving problems. If you, want, if you don't want to resolve problems, you want to run away from problems, and you think marriage is a place to run to, to, <laughs> to escape problems, <laughs> You are so naive. That means you are so naive. <laughs> you don't run to marriage to reduce problems. You go to marriage to increase problems. You go to marriage to solve problems. You go to marriage only because you, sh you are sure and you know that you are fit enough, you are prepared enough to resolve problems, that you have become good in resolving any challenge that will come to your life. So, so as a result... Uh, as a result, <laughs> as a result, I want to prepare the ladies and I want you all to be well informed and be well prepared much ahead of time before 
you go into marriage. And okay, that like I said, never try to go into a marriage because you are trying to go and resolve one problem or the other. You know, go to a marriage already fulfilled. Go to a marriage already self-sufficient. Go to a marriage, I mean, already knowing that you are good by yourself. Now, uh, and so, but before I talk about marriage, I even want to, again, uh, make the point that, you know, don't put marriage on your top list as a lady. Once you begin to put marriage as the most important thing in your life, as the most important thing you must do, as the most important thing you need to do in life, you begin to get yourself into a tight corner. Manipulations begin to affect you. You begin to get manipulated. You begin to look out. You begin to hunt. You begin to, you know, dream, daydreaming. I'm thinking about every man as a potential husband. And you begin to be, you know, you begin to be distracted from life. And that is already a bad place to be. If you are entertaining uh, thoughts of this could be my husband, this could be my husband, oh, that looks like you are already hunting. You are already looking for a potential husband. To look for a potential husband is actually to, uh, to, to book your failure. Is to book your failure. Any lady that looks for a man, any lady that is hunting for a man will always... 98% of the city of the case will always get into the wrong hands. You will always get into the wrong hands. So, um, so, so, you know, for you to really be happy and for you to really be fulfilled, uh, let me tell you what. Start by removing that question from your table all, all, all together. Just start by removing the question of marriage from your table, from your mind, from your thought. Just remove it. Just totally get it off your mind. Get it off your mind. Look at yourself, first of all, as a human being rather than as a woman. Look at yourself, first of all, as a whole person rather than as a lady that is just there to be taken or to be, you know, given over to a man. You know, don't look at yourself as somebody's second half. Why should you see yourself as second half when you could see yourself as a whole person? So instead of you looking at yourself as a second half of somebody else, you know, first of all, construct your life as a whole person, as a total man, as a complete person. Treat yourself as a complete human being first. You know, don't be looking at yourself as somebody to complement other person's life. Don't be looking that if they, I mean, it's so demeaning to look at yourself that way. I mean, it's an insult for you as a woman to be looking at yourself as somebody to go and complete another person's life. I mean, what a disgrace. I mean, is it not shameful for you to even think like that as a girl? Uh, don't demean yourself like that. Don't put yourself so low, down so low. So uh, uh, what you should do is, first of all, see yourself as complete. See yourself as happy. See yourself as wholesome. See yourself as fulfilled, satisfied, all by yourself. Only a completely sati I mean, a, a complete person, only a sufficient person, a fulfilled person by herself can go and build a happy life. If you are looking for that fulfillment or for that uh, sufficiency and for that happiness in marriage, you will be broken, it will, you will be let down in a very rough way. So... What I want to talk to you about today is learning how to learn to live by yourself and with yourself. Learning to live with yourself happy, fulfilled, satisfied. Learning, just learn to live by yourself, with, with yourself, fulfilled, happy, satisfied. That is what a girl must do before she begins even to entertain any man. Let them be running all around you. Let them be running to the and fro. Let them be even be on duty, you know, coming to chase after you. But you should know and you should tell yourself, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to give up my freedom, my liberty, until I learn to live with myself. So, girls, ladies, if you have not learned to live with yourself, if you have not learned to be happy with yourself, 
don't even entertain any man or any any proposal from anybody don't entertain it learn to live and be happy by yourself so that's the first point i want to i want to address today learn to be happy all alone learn to be happy all alone live as a single lady and learn to be happy as a single lady you must overcome the notion that to be single means to be lonely. It's a lie. To be single doesn't mean to be lonely. And uh, women talk about loneliness as if singleness equals to loneliness. No. To be single means to be complete. To be single means to be self-sufficient. To be single means to be happy by yourself. To be single means not to entertain another person in your life. To be single means not to bring somebody to come and spoil your joy and to come and spoil your party. To be single means to, to, to go about enjoying life all by yourself the way you want to see it and the way God wants you to live your life. And uh, so don't buy into the lie that says singleness means loneliness. What it means because you are single doesn't mean that you are lonely. So learn Become an, I mean, learn to live a happy life single first. Learn to, you know, learn to throw away, to overcome that notion, that lie that you have to overcome loneliness. Why should you be lonely? Because you are single doesn't mean you are lonely. And because you are single doesn't mean you have to be lonely. And actually, let me tell you this thing. Let me tell you something. Not emphasize this enough. Oh God help me. Do you know that loneliness, even not even singleness, but loneliness is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to man. To man and to a woman. Loneliness is one of the greatest gifts of God to us. No wonder Jesus will always go away. To a lonely place to be alone. Why? He, he even had people around him, but he was always running away from people to be alone. Why? Because he, would, he doesn't want people to steal away from him. One of the greatest blessings that exists, one of the greatest blessings that God himself has given to him. And that blessing is the ability to be alone. So, but the ladies have not been told the truth. And the ladies have not told themselves the truth. They have not been told that loneliness is one of their greatest assets. Loneliness is one of their greatest blessings. And um, so if you don't know that, if you don't know that loneliness, and not even loneliness, it doesn't have to be loneliness, but uh, singleness is, is a blessing. If, if you have not been told that singleness is one of your greatest assets, then you'll be running away from singleness. You'll be running away from being single. You'll be running away from loneliness because you are thinking that you are missing something or you are thinking that you are at a loss. But really, if your eyes open, if you get understanding, if you get wisdom, you will discover that loneliness or singleness is such a huge blessing. It's such a huge um Resource is such a great wealth that God has handed over to your hands that you should think twice. You should rather think twice before you exchange it for, for a man. You should rather think twice before you exchange your singleness and you give it up. Giving up your singleness is actually one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest losses in your life. You've got to think very well and you've got to weigh the advantages and the disadvantages of losing your, of losing your singleness. So, you know, you know, every girl but that either you want to marry or you don't want to marry, you must still learn to live a single life. You must learn to enjoy your singleness. You must learn to admire your single life, your lonely life, your life of your being alone. 
You must long to enjoy that. You must know that it's one of the greatest blessings you have. And you must know that you must, you must, you know, savour it, savage it. You must, you must fight for it. You must know it is an asset. It's one of your greatest assets. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. That singleness is a greater blessing than being married, at least for you. Now, marriage might be a greater blessing in terms that you have children or you have uh, somebody around you, but being single makes you to focus more on fulfilling God's will, on meeting God's desires. I mean, the Bible says that he that is single, he that is alone, thinks about the things of the Lord. So that's what Paul said. It makes you to be focused on things of the Lord and on fulfilling your purpose and on living your life the way you want it to be. But marriage, like I said, is more a complicated life because then you only not be thinking about God's will and God's desire for your life and the things of God. You will now be forced to be thinking of the things of man. You will now be focused more on thinking about your spouse's uh, needs and about your children's needs. Uh, it's uncomparable. The advantage of being single is totally uncomparable to the, the advantages of being married. That's why there is no marriage in heaven now. That's why there's no marriage in heaven. If the, if the advantage of being married had, or had been superior and had been more or greater than the, marriage of, uh, the advantage of being single, there would have been marriage in heaven. But there is no marriage in heaven because there is no need for it. It's a distraction. In heaven, it's going to be a distraction. That's why it will not happen. It will not happen. No marriage in heaven. Even the one you are married to here on earth, you have to be separated when you get to heaven. <laughs> Everybody have to go their own ways. <laughs> so don't make a big deal of marriage as if that's the only thing you are existing for. Don't make a, 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 a big deal of uh, marriage as if if you don't have it, you are doomed and you are unfortunate and you are unlucky and you are you know, and things are bad for you and things are bad, you know. Like, no, no, no. Don't buy into those lies. Don't buy into those lies. Like I said, even the ones that are married, the Bible urges us that they that are married should behave as if they don't marry. That they that have husbands should do and think as if they don't have. They that don't that 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 have wives should even behave and think more of themselves as if they don't have. Live independent of that. Why? Because the greatest status of where you could achieve more on earth and you serve God better on earth is when you are focused on the things of the Lord. And the Bible tells us that they that are not married are more concerned about the things of the Lord. Why do those that are married are more concerned about the things of their spouses? So just face it. So don't think that singleness is a curse. I mean, especially in Africa and in developing countries and some cultures, people have made the woman to think that being single is a curse. I even heard that people will go to any length to get rid of their singleness. Can you, <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? That people will go and do sacrifice, people will go and pray, people will go and give money out to some dubious prophets, people will go and... Uh, you know, they said that people people just do all kind of crazy stuff just for them not to be single. The very same thing that God said we should be. In fact, Paul was advising us and he said he would have preferred for all of us to remain single in the Bible as a matter of fact. <laughs> it's because that's not the highest life. The highest life is a life that is placing the master. The highest life is a life that is focused on God. That is the highest life. And that highest life could be lived better when you are not married. So even though it's good to be married, you could have children, we have progen uh, pro you know, we could have rep reproduction and you know, get, you know, the human race will be will continue going. But why should human race continue to grow at your cost? <laughs> so it's not for everybody. Of course it's good. Our body demands it that we marry. But but uh, you know, don't let you know people manipulate you. 
you ladies, that you single ladies, especially women, don't let people think that they are doing you a favor if they if they are proposing for you to marry, if they are proposing marriage to you. Don't let anybody think that they are doing you a favor. Oh, I'm going to marry you, so you should be rejoicing, you should be dancing, or and you should rather be worshiping the guy because he proposes you in marriage. No, 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 no. Don't put yourself down so low. You know, value yourself, respect yourself, honor your own self, and know that, no, you are doing him a favor if you are for you to agree to even marry him. You are the one doing him a favor. He's not doing you a favor. So, but for a girl to be able to think like that, and for a girl to be able to know that she is the one doing him a favor by marrying him, she must, first of all, value her own singleness. You must learn to value your singleness. You must value, you must learn to even enjoy your singleness. You must be able to enjoy your singleness and know that being single is not something, no, demonic is not something uh, that is a curse. Like some people say, don't be afraid of your singleness. In fact, like I said, Jesus would normally go ab away from people to hide, to, to be alone. And, and I personally, in my own life, have discovered that there is nothing as precious as solitude. As, as solitude. Even me now, as a married man, I, you know, I have an agreement with my wife uh, whereby I go away from the family once a month. I take a week uh, from the family just to be alone, just to be alone. Because solitude is one of the greatest inventions in life. All great men. They practice solitude. I mean, the ability to be able to withdraw from the daily activities, from the daily mundane, uh, you know, vanity of life and be able to just be alone, to be able to think, be able to be on your own. Can you imagine you being alone and then you are running away from it when people like us who are married are, you know, begging to be alone for at least one week every month? When Jesus, even the, the author of life, the person who understands life more than every other person, he was single, yet he was still running away from other people who were around him to be able to, be, to, be able to remain alone. So I would like to uh, I encourage the ladies that are here that one of the ways for you to attain self-sufficiency is to change your perspective on singleness. Don't look at your singleness anymore as loneliness. In fact, if anybody uses the word loneliness around you, chase them away. Remove that word from your vocabulary. Just That is one of the ways for you to just set yourself free for good. You need to be free mentally first. You need to set yourself free from that victim mentality and from that, uh, you know, from that, yeah, yeah, from that stereotype that the fact that you are single means you are lonely. You know, no, you are not lonely. Refuse to accept that. You know, reject that notion and uh, f stop referring to yourself as lonely lady, as lonely. You are a single girl, but look at that uh, type of, you know, singleness or that time when you are alone. Look at that as a form of solitude. Look, uh, convert it. Look at loneliness as solitude. Look at loneliness as solitude. Can you imagine how much you could be done during time of solitude? People like Paul. He was forced into solitude and thank God for that solitude that Paul had because that solitude that he had, I mean, it was prison, it was put in prison, but he, he converted that prison term into a time of solitude for himself. And a time of solitude is a time of, you no, know, of uh, self-development. A time of solitude is a time of um, uh, intellectual development. A time of uh, solitude is a time of... Uh, self-realization and uh, a time of uh, self-fulfillment. So that is what Paul did. And thank God that they put him in prison. Thank God that that time of loneliness, that time of solitude came to his life. And as a result of that, we are all being blessed today because he was alone. And God allowed that in his own wisdom. God knew that if Paul had been among people, if Paul had, uh, had kept on... Mm, ministering to a crowd and to people uh, uh, if 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 uh, if if Paul had been busy with church work or 
apostolic work or ministering to people, if you had been busy doing that, you know what? Uh, he wouldn't have had time to be able to write all those uh, letters and all those scriptures that we have right now. He wouldn't have the opportunity to have to have all the letters and to have. We would not even have the Bible the way we have it today. So that time of loneliness or that time of solitude was a great blessing, not just to Paul but to the whole world. In fact, God, you know, God said that a, a no hair of your head will fall to the ground without his permission. So God allowed and permitted the imprisonment of Paul for for him to get some time of solitude. For him to be able, because without that solitude, he would not have been as productive in his life as he became eventually. And the world would not have been blessed. The church would not have been the same. The Bible would not have been the same. The whole world would not have been the same if not for that time of solitude. So can you imagine what could come out of your own time of loneliness? Can you imagine what could come out of your own time of singleness? Can you imagine how much blessing could come out of your own you know, so, time of solitude when you are not imprisoned by somebody else that is push, pushing you to wake up one time and do that, but when you are alone and you are single by yourself? Turn your time of loneliness to your time of creativity. Make sure that loneliness or that time of loneliness that you have or that time of singleness that you have becomes the most productive time in your life. You know, turn it to a productive time. Make sure that it's, it becomes a time of when you develop yourself, when you become uh, productive, when you, you know, come up with your own products, when you add value to yourself, when you build a, a value chain about your life and around your life, about your time. Turn it to a time of conversion, when you are converting that time into some eternal values, eternal qualities, eternal, I mean, a product and that will bless the world even after you. So, so a time of uh, singleness is your blessing. It's one of your greatest assets that you have. It's one of your greatest treasure and assets that you have. So, because when you are single, you are able to do what you like. You are able to be in charge of your, of your timetable. You are able to be in charge of your, of your schedule. You are able to come up with what you want to do. You are able to plan for your future. You are able to face your destiny. You are able to focus on what God called you to do and what God created you to do. You are able to you know, tell yourself what you want to do. And you are able to say no to some other things that will distract you. But when, you know, so don't look at a time of uh, singleness as a, as a tragedy. Don't look at it as a loss. I mean, in fact, as a matter of fact, let me tell you something. What you do not, what most likely, what you did not develop in yourself and what you did not attain as a single person, maybe you would never even attain it anymore if you marry. So try to attain and achieve as much things as possible as a single person than waiting for when you are married. Because when you are married, you might, you know, there will be so many distractions. Oh my. Especially for the woman, you can't believe how many distractions are there in the marriage. So those ladies who are waiting for themselves to marry before they begin, they begin to, become, to do something for themselves, it is the greatest, greatest mistake they are making. You don't, in fact, <laughs> is the opposite. You must do and attain as much as possible. You must, you know, you must make sure that you fulfill most of your life plans while you are still single than when you when you are going to be married. Because once you are married, oh, one year later or two years later or three years later, a baby could come. And once a baby comes, oh. And if you don't have a house help, if you don't have, you know, you know, drivers, if you don't have those things, <laughs> forget about calling, forget about destiny, forget about gifts, forget about potential, forget about <laughs> vision. Those things become very difficult to attain because your life just go out of everywhere. I mean, so if you really want to attain, if you are serious about fulfilling life goals and purpose if you are serious about becoming somebody on earth if you are serious about you know not just being here as as another flower or as another plant or tree but if you want to leave a memory here if you want to leave a mark on earth here 
face it and pursue it hard while you are still single. Pursue it hard. And teach your children. I think every parent needs to teach their children this message. You need to have your girls, especially if you have a baby girl, teach them not to wait uh, for marriage for fulfillment. They must rather be, try to be fulfilled before marriage than after marriage. So, uh, yeah. You know what? I, I have an illustration here. If you know, Let me tell you, ladies. I want to compare it's the single life to you know you know because when you are single when you are alone just like jesus does did right he was running away from the crowd to be alone by himself so that he could attain more he could he could plan his life more he could you know put his purpose and his priorities first well you know with the woman uh I even think you have to build your life in such a way while you are still single to run away from friends, run away from crowd, run away from family members that just want to run away from all excess luggage, run away from people that are surrounding you to want to get you busy from morning to night. Maximize your singleness, maximize your, turn your singleness to solitude. And the way I look at it is, is that, let's imagine, every single lady can associate with this. Imagine that you are weighing 100 kilograms or 150 kilograms as a woman. Imagine that you are weighing 150 kilograms. And excess luggage or excess weight is excess luggage. Excess weight is, is like killing yourself. So look at singleness or solitude as a time when you withdraw, as a diet time. Look at your singleness, as your time of singleness, your time of solitude, your, as a time when you are withdrawing from excess food, when you are withdrawing from overeating, when you are withdrawing yourself from, you know, when you put yourself on a diet, on a slim diet, on a weight loss diet, when you are just eating the healthy food, you know, vegetable, all the things that build you up and make you lean. So that is the way I will look at singleness. The time of your singleness, your single life, you should see it as a time when you are shedding unnecessary weight. You should see your single life as a time when you are shedding unnecessary you know, burden, luggage, or unnecessary friends, unnecessary relationships, unnecessary associations, unnecessary fellowship, unnecessary company and companions. So look at your single life as a time of diet. When you are dieting, when you are keeping yourself, when you are keeping yourself from all damaging you know, diets, all damaging excess luggage, excess weight, excess, uh, excess relationship, when you are you know, disciplining yourself, when you are making your life very trim, when you are making your life very focused, it's just like you, know, you see yourself being on a diet program, on a, on a gym program, on a sports program, on, uh, you know, when you go to the sport, to the sport, to work out, you are working out to make your life more focused, life, life more disciplined, life, you no, know, to get the, the kind of life that you want, to get the kind of body that you want. So that is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh, you know, so the time of your singleness is that time where you are able to, you know, make yourself very trim and slim inside. When you make your life stream, when you put in your life and you focus your life only on the things that are important to you. Only when you are making your life to be, to be, to be, to, to, to you are getting rid of excessive luggages in your life. You are getting rid of excessive un unnecessary relationships. When you are getting, you are focusing your life only on your goals, only on your vision. When your life is very focused, your life is very determined and your life is bringing out the result that you want it to be. You, that is the time for you to develop your skills, to develop, to get second profession, second degree, third degree, to develop one skill, the third skill, third four. Get yourself engaged. Don't let yourself be bored. You know, develop skills, develop, you know, get profession, get, 
uh, you know, get new no, abilities, develop new skills, get a second education, third education, you know, uh, become, become a master in many other things, many, many, many things. Learn to do many things that you would not have learned to do. It's a time to, to, to maximize your life when you are single. You know, there's nothing like being single. You know, being single is what, I mean, can you imagine people like Bill Gates, it takes away two weeks uh, at several times a year just to be alone by himself. Can you imagine people like uh, Salvador Dali, you know, those great names you hear, they go and take away like six months, three months just to be alone to, to practice solitude, loneliness. People like, uh, no, you know, you know, uh, all the great names, you know, Thomas Edison, uh, uh, Isaac Newton, uh, all the great names you hear, they were practicing going away from everybody. Some of them never married. Some of them, why? Because f singleness or solitude is one of the greatest blessings you could ever have. That is when you could attain so much, when you could focus on leaving a memory, on, on leaving a mark in the world, on, on, you know, developing yourself, on attaining the highs that you will not be able to attain if you have not been single. Because you need a lot of time to really be able to make an impact in the world. So I hope, I hope that is, uh, you know, that, that is helpful for you. But for you to be able to live that kind of life, let me give you another point here as a single lady that will help you. For you to be able to live a kind of focused life, productive life, as a single lady, you also uh, must live a life of a life, a purposeful life. You know, you don't just if you are just lying on bed, you know, going to work and looking for a job and just you are just surviving. You are just living, you know, so to survive. Wake up, go to work. Wake up, go to work. You don't have goals. You don't have ambition. You don't have vision. You don't have uh, targets. You don't have purpose. You don't have mission in life. Of course, then you'll be bored. Of course, you'll be bored. So for you not to be bored, another thing that you have to do, you must make sure that you are putting targets before yourself on yearly basis on uh, you must have a long-term plan you must have a 10-year plan for your life you must have a middle mid-term plan a, a plan for t five years from one year to five years plan you must have from five years to ten years plan and you must have a yearly plan and a daily plan for your life so put your life on goals don't just make your plan the only plan is that you are waiting for a husband don't just put your life in a you know don't frustrate yourself if you put your life in a place where you say okay my only plan is to i'm just waiting for mr right and the problem with women is that once you begin to wait for mr right you lose focus of any other thing. The problem with women is that they are indecisive. So once you have decided that you, you, know, you are waiting, the thing with women is that while they are waiting like that, they are, you know, they are in an indecisive mode. So they will not be able to do many other things. They will not be able to attain a great height anymore because they are in that indecisive position. That indecisiveness is a very dangerous state of mind for you. So, you know, just remove that from your equation. If you, if, if you are going to marry, if you are supposed to marry, if Mr. Wright is supposed to come, you know, God, let, let that be God's problem. Let that be God's question. Don't let it be your own headache. Don't let it be your, don't worry yourself. Don't, you know, make that uh, to be your own priority. You know, set yourself, set your mind free from it. If you are single, you know, know that you must have, you know, your life must be productive. And the way to do that is, you know, pray to God, seek the face of God, find out uh, the will of God for your life. If you don't know your calling, I have a whole series of teachings that I've done, how to discover your calling, how to discover who you are. You know, go and check some of the links here. There is, in these comments, there is a link. And then on my page, Facebook page, there are links everywhere on how to find all the messages that you have missed. And so you find series on how to become or who you are called to become or uh, how to discover your calling there. So make sure that you put some target before yourself as a single lady. You have a long-term dream, at least for 10 years. So I'm focused on attaining that dream. And then after you, have, apart from long-term dream, have uh, a middle-term dream, 
for between one to five years. So apart from that, then have a short-term dream for one year, uh, for one year, and then have and, and and the way you do it, these are not different dreams, all right. So what you do is that you take you have a general, a long-term dream of ten years, and then you break that down into five years, and then you break it down into one year, and then you break it down into every day. So what it means is that, for example, you, let's say your big dream is an elephant, big elephant. How do you eat a big elephant? You cannot leave, I mean, eat the elephant just by opening your mouth and swallowing it. What you do is that you cut the elephant down, first of all, into bigger pieces, and then into smaller pieces, and then you measure how much of this meat can you eat in a day or at a sitting so that's what you do with your vision as well so let's say your vision is to reach out uh one, no ten thousand people in 10 years so that tells you that okay ten thousand people in 10 years that means one thousand people in a year so one thousand people in a year that means how many people in a month okay that means how many people in a day so that's the, the, the way you plan your day so your day your 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 daily plan is coming out of your 10 year plan your yearly plan is also coming out of that your 10 okay let's say this your your uh uh 10 year plan is coming out of your life goals and calling all right then your one year uh, five year plan is coming out of your 10 year plan your one year plan is coming out of your five year plan and your one uh, your every month plan is coming out of your one year plan your daily plan is coming out of that as well so so you cut all those things down just so you are not having different visions and running after them but you are living a purposeful life that way you, you, you make your life to be focused as a single lady you are not entertaining the, the thought of thinking oh who is coming for you today when are they going to marry you and if you begin to think about men you will never attain anything in life so Cut your life out in visions. Cut your life out in vision. And make sure that every day you are pursuing those dreams, those visions. You are pleasing God. You are pursuing the purpose and the will of God for your life. You are not distracted by what people are saying. If you, you say, oh, I don't want to miss what some people live in the lies of thinking, oh, I don't want to miss what belongs to me. Or oh, supposing uh, if I'm not paying attention to the man and supposing it's for me, look, anything that is for you will not pass you by. Anything that is for you, we find you. So you don't be busy finding anything. It's not a woman's duty to be busy looking for a man or something. So don't be busy looking for a man or even thinking about them. Put your life together. Make your life interesting. Pursue your goals and dream, and be focused on that. So, so that is what will keep you focus that's what will keep you concentrated that is what will make you to be less distracted in your mind and that will also save you from a lot of mental attacks mental attack in the time in terms of you know thoughts and what people are saying you, you don't have time to be thinking of what people are saying you don't have time to be thinking of public opinion you don't have time to be thinking of uh what people will say or how they understand or how they look at you because you are so focused because you have your goal that you are pursuing. You have your goal before you. So uh, that is the way to live if, if you are single. That is the way to live <sighs> if you are single. Mm. So uh, that way, because, you know, let me tell you why this is even more important. You know, any girl or any single lady that does not have her own plan, this kind of plan that I'm talking about now, if you don't have your, you know, long-term plan, short-term plan, and, you know, middle-term plan, middle plan, if you don't have your daily and your yearly, your, your life plan that you are pursuing on a daily basis, other people will, you will be, if you don't have, if you are not pursuing your own plan, you will be pursuing other people's plan. You will be pursuing the plans, you know, other people will give you their own plans to fulfill. Uh, this culture will give you their plan to fulfill. Your parents and your relatives will be giving you their own plan to fulfill. So if you don't have your own plans, if you don't have your own goals, if you don't have your own agenda, you know, everybody around you will be telling you what to do. So you will be busy wasting your life doing what other people think you should do. You'll be uh, busy, you know, wasting your life, you know, you know, pursuing not what you were created to do. You'll be pursuing another person's dream. You'll be pursuing other people's dream. You'll be pursuing the dream of your boss at work. You'll be pursuing the dream of your, 
your company, you'll be busy pursuing and living for the dream of your church or your pastor or your denomination. You'll be busy and pursuing. You know, they will be, all of them will just be taking advantage of you because you have not put your own life in order. You have not, you know, uh, you know, you have not uh, worked out a goal and a vision for yourself. And so that's why churches take advantage of single people. And they will be telling you, they will pray for you, or your husband will come tomorrow, your husband will come there after tomorrow. Uh, if you come and do sit in the church from morning to night and Monday to Friday, and if you just, you know, you serve the ministry, the vision of the ministry, if you are faithful, they will be telling you, you have to be faithful. So they, will be, they are praying for your husband, the husband will come, you know. So it's the manipulation that that uh, that deprives you of your real calling it deprives you of really becoming what god intended you to become so if you don't have your own vision somebody you will be busy with another man's vision if you don't have your own passion other person will give you their own uh, headache they will give you their headache they will give you their their own engagement their own assignment they will ke keep you busy doing all the wrong things that you have no business doing so so, so it's, a, it's a tragic life for single people it's a tragic life for single ladies especially everybody just exploit them everybody take advantage of them and that is mainly because they have no vision of their own that's only because they can not get themselves focused on their life goals and vision and they are not pursuing that consistently so so to set yourself free from all those manipulations that will come from you know family members relatives friends and all that is the only way to do that is to have your own plan so any free time you have you know, uh, they will not be saying, oh, she's not married, she's free. Okay, come and go and get her. You are the one that is being called to do one party or the other. You are the one being called to prepare one marriage, to prepare another person's ministry, to prepare the praise and worship in another one, to prepare one another person's church, to go out from evangelism, to do all kind of things. You'll just be used. You'll be used, 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 and useless, messed up, and thrown away if you don't have your own plan and, and, and your own vision. So learn to live your own life and make that life interesting for yourself. Make that life uh, interesting, but not just interesting. Make it God's life. Let your life line up with God's plan, God's dream for you. Let it be in accordance with God intended for you. Intended for you. Now, let me quickly answer one other question. People will accuse you. This is a word of caution, I will say. People will accuse you and say, if you are living like that, like what I've just said now, you are living for your vision, you are living for your dream, you know what people will come and tell you? People will come and tell you, uh, she's egocentric, she's selfish, she's just living for herself, she doesn't love God, or she doesn't, she's not serious, she doesn't love the church, or she's not serving the church, or she... Uh, she's uh, egocentric or she's selfish or she's uh, depressed or she's lonely or she doesn't relate, she's not social or she's, uh, uh, she's living a bored life or she doesn't, she's not friendly, she doesn't, uh, all kind of talk will come against you. People will think, be still saying uh, it's because she said she's not married, uh, she doesn't want to do this, she's... You know what? Let them call you egocentric as much as possible. You know the Bible says, "Love thy neighbor." I mean, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, and thy neighbor, thy neighbor as thyself. So, if you don't love yourself, how will you love other people? So, learn to love yourself. Let them say you are egocentric. Learn to live to love yourself and to live with yourself. Learn to be happy with your own self. Learn to be happy with your life. Learn to love yourself, to be satisfied with yourself. If you are not satisfied with yourself, how can you bring satisfaction to other people's life or to the life of any man? Or to how, if you don't love what you see about your life, you do you are not enjoying your own life. What kind of joy will you bring to another person? So be busy trying to enjoy to to, to fall in love with your own life. Be busy trying to fall in love with God first of all and love yourself love what you do be satisfied with yourself and then then you might be you'll be able to be a blessing to another person 
But if you are going to be married and not satisfied, not being satisfied with yourself, not being happy with yourself, you you know, you will bring that uh, unhappiness to the life of another man. And that man will be very frustrated at you. That man would not like it. So only someone who is already satisfied with himself or with herself, only someone who is already fulfilled, who is already happy with herself, who is already satisfied with herself, can really bring joy and satisfaction to another life. So, so if you are going to a marriage, dreaming or looking forward to somebody to make you happy and to make you know that there you find satisfaction, you know, no, no, no. You bring only what you have to marriage. You only bring there your frustration. You only bring there your unhappiness. You only bring there your your anger, your disappointment. So learn to live with yourself. Learn to be happy with yourself. Learn to love yourself and what you do before you go into marriage. Then you can bring that satisfaction, that joy, that love to that place. Otherwise... <laughs> Uh, you know, marriage will be a disaster. Marriage will be a disaster for you. Uh, marriage will be a disaster for you. Marriage will be a disaster for you. Um, by the way, what was the time? Let me see the time. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> my time is up. <laughs>